and repeat with me, you that are listening. It is written. How do we resist temptation? How do we not fall to the temptations that are uh, uh, given to us or put around us each and every day? First of all, one of the first things we must learn to do is that we must use the example of Jesus when he was being tempted in the wilderness by Satan. And that's why it was so important for me to read all 11 of those verses. Three separate occasions while Jesus was in one place, the wilderness, at one time, the enemy came and tried to tempt our Lord and Savior. And you got to understand that Jesus had on the form of flesh. And so his flesh was just like you and I. It rose up and it was he was tempted, but he resisted. And each of Satan's temptations was met with the same answer. It is written. It is written. And when he said it is written, he followed it by a scripture. Come on and say it is written. So if the son of God used the word to effectively end the temptation, which we know works because after three failed attempts, the devil left him. In that 11th verse, what did it tell us? That the enemy left him. He fled. He moved back. And if it worked, how much more do we need to use it to resist our own temptations? And all of our efforts to resist will be weak and ineffective unless they are powered by the Holy Ghost through the constant reading, through the constant studying, through the constant meditation of the word. Or it's through the reading, studying, and meditating on the word that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. There is no other weapon against temptation except the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. My mind has got to be changed. My thought pattern has got to be changed. I have got to take on a new attitude. I know there was a popular song back in my day in the 80s and the 90s that I've got a new attitude. And that new attitude that uh, I think it was Patti LaBelle was referencing was the new attitude in reference to the world. But I'm telling you, it is absolutely essential that the people of God in this time, 2021, in the turmoils that we are facing, that we pick up a new attitude with regards to resisting the temptations of the enemy. Come on and shout out, it is written. There is no other weapon against temptation except the Holy Ghost. If our minds are filled with the latest TV shows, if our minds are filled with the latest, the most hip hop music, if our minds are filled with all the rest of the culture, everything that the culture has to offer, we will be bombarded. We will be overwhelmed. We will be pulled down with messages and images that in Inevitably lead to sinful lust, to sinful actions, to the falling down of not resisting the temptations that are put before us. But somebody shout out, it is written. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I mean Jesus with all my mind, body, and soul. And if ever there was a time before that we need to be strong in the Lord, it is a time such as now. But if our minds are filled with the majesty and holiness of God, if our minds are filled with the love and the compassion of of Christ, if our minds are filled with the brilliance of both his love and his compassion, it is and that is reflected in his word, 
we will find that our interest of the world will subside. Our interest, our lust of the world will dis, dis, uh, diminish and they will absolutely disappear. But without the word's influence in and on our minds, we are open to anything Satan wants to throw at us. But come on and say, I refuse to have an open mind for Satan to just throw anything at me. I will stand for the Lord with all of my mind, body, and soul. And I declare and decree to you that are listening to me today, to you that are in your automobile, on your sofa, in your kitchen, uh, those of you that are here in the sanctuary right now, it is written that I will not fall. It is written that I will remain strong. It is written that I will be a survivor in this year 2021 and that I will not succumb to the wiles and the task of the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and shout it is written. The love, the compassion, and the word of God are the only means to guard our hearts, to guard our minds, which in turn, they keep the source of temptation away from us. Do you know that if your heart is open to every and all sorts of things, then you will be easily, you will easily fall to your temptations. Do you understand that if you lack compassion, for your brother or your sister. If you lack a forgiving spirit for your brother or your sister, you are subject to fall at the first onset of temptation. Temptation is going to come, but it is written that we don't have to fall to every sound of doctrine, to every temptation that walks before us. You can live a saved life. You can live a separated life. You can live a life that is free from sin. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what other teachers and preachers may tell you. I'm telling you that the word of God says that I can live a holy life that is free and separated from sin. It is written. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise. Remember the words of Christ to his disciples in the garden on the night of his betrayal. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. People who are saved, those who have truly worked at changing their lives, is there anybody listening that has truly worked? You have worked hard to change your life. You walked away from sin. You walked away from uh, the abusiveness of drugs. You walked away from relationships that done you no harm. You walked away from the bars. You walked away from the nightclubs. You walked away from those things that were causing you harm. You did, you made an attempt you have tried with all of your strength to change your life. Would not openly want to jump back in sin. If you have done all of these reformations and you're re reforming in your life, if you made all of those changes, if you are better than you were last year, you do not want to jump back into sin. You do not want to go back to the way you used to be. But let me tell you something here, my brother and sister. We cannot resist falling into sin because our flesh is not strong enough to resist. My flesh alone will not keep me from going back to where I used to be. My flesh will not allow me to do that. We place our 
ourselves many times into situations uh, 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 to fill our minds with lustful passions that lead us into sin. My message to you today is it is written. You don't have to put yourself in those situations. If God delivered you from the drug house, then stay away from the drug addict. If God delivered you from relationships that were harmful to you, then stay away from those relationships that have caused you great pain and sorrow. If God delivered you from the bars, from the drunken streets, if God delivered you from these things, then stay away. But you alone, your flesh will not allow you to do it. You need to understand that it is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You need God. You need his word. You need his strength. You need his power. You need his love. You need his compassion so that you can stay away. Alice, it, it is written that I shall live and not die. It is written that I can live a life that is changed. We need to renew our thinking as we are told in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's go there for a moment. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And I'm almost done, but I want you to hear this. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because, of, because all of he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. And this is truly the way of worship. Verse 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Oh, it is written. Hallelujah. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Come on and say with me. It is written. The love and the compassion. Proverbs 4, 14 through 15 tells us, do not enter the path of the wicked and do not proceed in the way of evil man. Avoid it. Do not pass by. Turn away from it and pass on. Matthew 5, 29 has some excellent advice for us. If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And that sounds severe. That sounds very drastic. I know it does. It makes you cringe. But hear me and hear me good. Sin is severe. Sin is severe. And sin will cause you to get out of the ark of safety with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And sin will cause you to go to hell. Jesus is not saying for us to literally remove body parts. And I am not saying that you should literally remove your body parts. But what this scripture is teaching us is this, that it is necessary, that if it is necessary, a drastic measure must be taken to avoid sin. It is written. It is written. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. This time of testing show that Jesus was the son of God, able to overcome the devil and able to overcome his temptations. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. You are able, oh my God, you are able to overcome the temptations of this world. You do not have to fall to the temptations that are all around you. We just witnessed a great insurrection at our nation's capital. And I'm not here to get on a political 
movement or not here to, to say one way that I have my own personal thoughts and I'm going to keep them my personal thoughts. But did you see how easily it was for people that just were a part of the group to fall into the temptations of acting like those who were destructive. I honestly believe that everyone there did not go to do what they did. But because they were tempted by what was going around them, what was happening around them, they fell into that trap before they realized it. And I want each, each and every one of you that are listening to know that the enemy has traps set up for us. And he has traps set up for us to fall. We may not go to this place, that place, be around that one or that one with the intention of falling. But oh, let me tell you the first opportunity that the enemy has to talk to your mind, to get you caught up in the hype, to get you caught up in the moment, to get you caught up in what's going around you, he will hit you with temptation faster than you can blink your eye. And before you know it, you have fallen into the temptations of the enemy. Hear me clearly. A person has not shown true obedience if he or she has never had an opportunity to disobey. <laughs> There's not a one of us who has not had the opportunity to disobey. And if you say it, it's not you, I don't believe you're telling the truth. You're not being truthful with yourself. Everybody has had the opportunity to disobey. And God wants to see if we really will obey him when we are faced with all sorts of temptation. You don't have to fall into that lustful situation. You don't have to fall into that angry situation. You don't have to fall into that frustration that haunts you day in and day out. Each of us will be tested. It is written. Each of us are going to be tested. You will be tested on your job. You will be tested in your home. You will be tested in your neighborhood. You will be tested by your friends. You will be tested by your children. And because we know that testing will come, we should be alert and be ready. And I'm prophesying right now, be alert and be ready. Because each and every one of you that are listening, that are in this room, you are going to be tested one way or another. But it is written that I don't have to fall to my temptation. Remember your convictions because you're going to be tested. Because we know that testing will come. We're going to make a declaration today that we're going to be ready. Our convictions are only strong if we hold up under pressure. Are you able to hold up under pressure? Are you able to hold up when that smooth, slick talking one comes to you and tries to get you to sway this way or that way? Are you able to hold up under temptation? Let us decide on this cold Sunday, January 17th, I believe, will do what Jesus did. Declare and decree, it is written. Temptation may attack you by surprise. Temptation may attack you in the middle of your sleep. But do like Jesus did and say, it is written. And then put a scripture behind it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Temptation may take us by surprise. It may even make us feel ashamed. But come on and say, but. Come on and say, but. But temptation itself is not sin. And the God and God never tempts us. 
the God that we serve, that you serve, my friends, he will not tempt you. But the enemy of the air is the tempter. Sin begins when we give into temptation and when we disobey God. And remembering this will help us turn to God and resist temptation. It is written, I am an overcomer. It is written, I shall live and not die. It is written, God is my refuge, a very present help in the time of trouble. So when you fire back at temptation in the manner that Jesus did, you can expect the results that Jesus received. I will make it through my situation. I will be strong and not weak. I am an overcomer and I will not fall to anything. I am. When we get far back, this is what happens. And I'm almost done. We're going to finish a few minutes early today. I'm almost done. Verse 11 tells us this. <laughs> First of all, someone shout out, it is written. Come on and shout, it is written. I need to hear you on Facebook. I need to hear you on the conference call. I need to hear you that are listening on the radio. Shout out, let the rafters ring. It is written. Verse 11 tells us this declaration. The test was over. The devil left and in his place, angels came and took care of Jesus. Come on and shout, the test is over. We've been tested in 2020. We've been tested on every hand. How many of you went through in 2020? How many of you had some situations that you didn't think you was gonna get through? How many of you dealt with sickness and all sorts of financial ups and downs? It is over. But come on and shout, the test is over. And it is written that the angels will come and see about me. Everybody give the Lord a praise offering right now. Come on and give him a praise offering. Today, it is written that you do not have to succumb or yield to the temptations of the tempter. And don't get it confused, brothers and sisters. Don't you dare get it confused. I cringe when I hear people say, why did the Lord do this to me? And why is all this? It's not him. He doesn't tempt you. He's there to get you through your temptation. But don't get it confused. It's the enemy. It's Satan that's trying to get you to fall down in your tracks. It's Satan that is trying to get you to, to, to declare and decree that Jesus is not real. It is Satan that is working overtime to get you to give up the ground you have gained. It is Satan that is trying to get you to go back to the smoking of the drugs, the taking of the drugs, the drinking of the alcohol, the relationships that do you no good. It is Satan that is trying to get you to stop going to church and listening to the radio sermons, listening to the Facebook sermons. It is Satan that is trying to bring other things in your face to where you do not see that it's necessary to do what you used to do to keep God in your life. It is Satan. And he's tempting you each and every day. And he wants to destroy you. But we must do like Jesus did and stand flat firm. Jesus listened to what Satan said. But every time 
every time he knew where his strength came from. And he fired back at the enemy and said, it is written that I will not fail. And I'm telling you on this morning, the enemy is going to try his best to get each and every one of us on this week. We are living in a time where he's running rampant, seeking who he may devour. But oh, if you will just remember whose you are and remember who you are serving, you will survive. Is there one that is listening? You know what? I'm tired, Pastor Wendell. I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of living in a shelter of fear. And I've yielded myself for the last time to the temptations of the enemy. This is it. I'm done. I am not falling back to where I used to be. This message was for you. And you can give the Lord your life right now. And if you would, just lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And today I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. I've been tempted and I have fallen to temptation. But as of today, I give you my life. Save me. Forgive me. And receive me. And I will be your vessel. I believe that you were born of a Virgin Mary. And I believe that you died on Calvary's cross. And you rose on the third day. And at the end of that third day, you got up and went back to be with the Father. But you left me a comforter. And you left me hope. And because you left me the gift of salvation, today I am saved. If you prayed that prayer, and if you prayed it with all earnesty, honesty, you are saved right now. And for those of us who are saved, let's give the Lord a praise offering for those who accepted Christ in their life right now. To my brothers and my sisters who know Christ, many of you have fallen to temptation. <laughs> the enemy has made you do some things that you are sorry for. The enemy has made you say some things that you wish you could take back. The enemy has made you act some kind of way, feel some kind of way that you wish you could change. You can't change that. That's done and over. But understand what I just said. It's done and over. From right now, start new. Start fresh. And when temptations come, lean and depend on our only wise, on the only wise God, our Savior. Lean and depend on him. And use the tools that Jesus used. You may not know a lot of scriptures, but just shout out, it is written. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed beg bread. Come on and say, it is written. Our Father who art in heaven. It is written. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And if you notice what Jesus did, three times he was tempted. And he used that strategy. And after the third time, what did the enemy do? He left. And I tell you, I, I encourage you to try that on this week. Because I'm telling you, he won't give up after the first time. He's going to try. But I'm just uh, 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 stubborn enough to believe. That if I do it like Jesus did. After that third time. 
and I shout out, it is written, get thee behind me, Satan. That Satan has to get behind me. How many of you believe that on today? It is written, 